Alright, okay guys, I've brought you back. So if you watched the last video, I was gonna, the video was going to be too long, so I cut it at that. And I've brought you back now. I know this is the piece of chestnut I said I was going to turn into the vase. Right, I have um, put a tenon on it and I've drilled it. I've put a 25mm hole down there. Hole goes down to three quarters of the way down. And I've put a little tenon on the end that goes in my gripper jaws, okay? Um, I'm really loving these jaws because the beauty with that is these jaws are literally two mil wider than the foot, they're like 16 mil. So if I use the 14 mil carbide and I just go straight in on the end, the actual thickness of the cutter, I get a perfect tenon for it without it bottoming out. So that's brilliant. And I don't have to have a dovetail because these are gripper jaws. They grip nicely. I've drilled the end. I'm just going to make sure that it's still okay. Yep, just a little nip. That's still tight. Perfect. So what I'm going to do, I've drilled the hole. I'll bring you around here a little bit. I'm going to bring you in. Yeah, I'm on my own again. Lisa's now gone in to do some other well, I think she's actually getting dinner on. So, right, I'm uh, going to bring this. I've just got a cone center in here. I'm going to bring that in for some pull for support for support while i just rough this down to round get it down to round okay so i'm going to put my face shield on now um i'm not sure what i'm going to use chances are i might use a spindle gouge on this or something like that you can do it with a carbide you see i've done the um the tea light holder i did that all with carbide you can do it with carbide challenge yourself you can do half with carbide we might even do it here we might do half with traditional and half with a carbide we'll see we'll see how we go i'm going to do the same design as i did that this is going to be a vase okay so right first off let's get started up and roughing down i'm going to be using my uh one inch roughing gouge with fingernail grind right I'm down to drilling speed. I've drilled it at eight, uh, well, 880, so I'm gonna get my speed up to my turning speed. You know my turning speeds, guys. I've already spoken about that on other videos. So there we go, and we're gonna come in and get this down to round. Right, straight away, I've got a, a gap there, so I'm gonna bring that in. Yes, I could take some more cuts, but I'm not going to. I'm going to get this down to my, where my jaws are there. That's just, just coming on to round, so a little bit deeper. That's it, now it's round. Nice. Right, I'm going to take my parting tool and go to where my bottom's going to be, which is going to be about here. Give myself a little bit of room with that. That's it, not too far in at the moment because obviously we've got to do some work here. And now what I want to do, I'm going to stop it, I want to measure and get the middle. There, oh that's going to have some nice grain pattern on it, that's looking nice, right what have we got, oh we're over 6 inches on that, right ok let's use a different tape measure for that, got a pencil here, yep, right ok so we have come down to 6 and a quarter inches, so that is going to be the middle there. So I'm going to take that as for the middle, like that. And now I want to do a, a little bead in the centre. So what I'm going to do is that and that. So that's what I've got to come down to, is that. Okay, so that's looking all right, actually. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of it with, with this... Uh, with the roughing gouge because I can just for moving it nice and quick I 
comes in nice. I think I'll go for a little bit more taper than that. Yeah, I think that's going to be all right. That comes in both ends like that. So let's take a little penis cut. Right, that's going to be okay like that. Yeah, right, I'm going to get um, change over now to a spin decaf. I'm not going to take anything away from this end yet because I want to actually go in there and hollow that out a bit, okay? So I'm going to go over just to a my normal spindle gouge and just get a better little cut on this Drop the handle and you can cut out there and that will leave you a beautiful finish on that you can't normally cut uphill but you well they say you can't cut uphill but well you can right awkward thing is this has got so much grain pattern it looks like it's got lines but it's actually the grain i can i think the grain's going to raise on this a little bit right i'm going to follow that out a little bit now in there so what i'm going to do i'll bring it over to uh, this side like so I'm going to move this away there we go I'm actually ooh, going to take this out this cone centre oh, oh I've done it that's it so I'm trying to wind it back further than I needed to right okay just move the tail stock out of the way for a minute turn this round and I'm going to Hollow this out a little bit. Right. And well, we're going in on the end grade. I think actually what I'm gonna do is probably use um let me get you in the right right place here as well. I think you can see from that. Yeah, I'm probably gonna use to start off with the square carbide push down in here and I want to go in at a paper Feels quite nice there. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to use the uh, the number two, the GT2 box follower, to go down and just clean up here. Um, now I'm in a scrape mode because obviously you can't get a push cut down inside this. Okay. Well, I say you can't. I just want to sort that out down there a little bit, so. That's down at the bottom there, that's the bottom there. Just hit the bottom, see. I'm going to clean up the bottom a little bit. There we go. Rolling over and come out. You want to come out up here. You don't want to come out straight, you want to come out up. Roll it over. Yeah, a little bit of singing and that gives you a really smooth finish there. This tool's been a little bit big actually for me to drop the handle in off. So I'm going to go over to the standard 
box hollower, the number one box hollower. Okay, and I can see down in there, so I'm coming in. Right, there we are. Now I can come back, drop my handle. There's a little bit of singing, and there we go. And that's nice. That's a nice finish there. Front, just going to need a little trim on it. Feels nice. Be careful when you uh, touch that. Don't touch the edge here because it will be sharp. There we go. Now it's not. That's it. Perfect. Lovely. I like that. I'm liking that a lot. Right. Okay. So I'm going to just put a little bit of sandpaper in there. Run that over there. And I've followed the taper. So using the square, you can get the taper. It's just as you come down to the middle, as that hole gets smaller, because I didn't want to go all the way, so I've got to follow the taper. As you get to the middle, the bar will catch the bottom, so it will push you to the middle. That's when you change over to the, uh, the box follower. Okay? And then, like I said, as you come out, if you drop the handle right down, come out at the top here, you get a beautiful finish with no tear out. Okay? That's what you've got to do. I mean, you can take, if I had, if I had, like, some bad tear out here, I mean, not down inside here, because it doesn't, you know, I was going to see it as a vase. If I had some bad tear out on this top edge here, the only way I'd do that is I'd use a detail cutter and take a push cut. Or, or I'd use a spindle gouge and take a push cut. If I was showing it as carbide or you're using carbide, your detail cutter is the one you will use. And you take a push cut. Right, there we go. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on here. There we go, look at that, beautiful. But not that I've completely finished it yet, there. Because I haven't. Right, just that little bit, that's enough. Now, because I'm going to have to sand in there probably a little bit again, because what I'm going to do is... Well, actually, no, I probably won't. I don't really need to support this end. I've got enough support up here, really. So I should actually be okay. Right, lock everything down. Right, I'll bring you back round this way a little bit. Okay, you can sort of see from, from there. I can't have you too far round because I can't, uh, my head will keep hitting you. Okay, right. And I'm going back to my spindle gouge. And I'm going to bring this down here. A little bit of the grain, where the grain changes there. You see it just bounced, so don't just carry on, come back, pick up that cut and come back over it. Well I've got to go a little bit deeper yet. Right, I'm not even yet, I'm going to take this down a little bit. It's going to be my bead, but I'm leaving that for a bit. Right, as you can see now, I've got to go down a bit more, and I've got to bring this down. Now, if you come in with a spindle gouge, see? Get your bevel on. Same as when you're going round on a bowl. You get your bevel on, there's your bevel, and we're cutting. The wood is coming down, and we're slicing it on here. We are going, we're basically, we're pushing into end grain, see? Because the end grain's all coming out here. And we're pushing into it. So it's like there, if you push it into that. Now, if you try and do a push cut, as in there, and push in, you're gonna tear this grain out here. It's not gonna like being cut, okay? But if you cut this way, the 
grain's coming down onto here and you're slicing it off. So this will always keep a nice finish. Now I'm going a bit deep there, so I'm going to back it off a little bit. So I've got to be careful. I don't want to take this paper down too much down here at the bottom. They've got to match. And don't forget, as you come down, you must raise your handle to keep in touch with the cut. Now we are sort of pretty much there now. I'll bring this down now. I don't know how big I want that to be. It's a bigger piece, so I've got to have slightly bigger feed, really. I think I'm. I don't want it quite as big as that. I think that's going to be about right. So I'm going to roll it by coming over both sides like so. So I've now got to come in and then roll it. Okay, and then come in and then roll it. There we go, and that way we get a, a nice rolled, semi-rolled feed. Now I've got a little a little bit more to go from up here now to bring this down. pretty good to me right okay yeah it looks right I've got a very slight pump there so I'm just going to take a little there that's gone and then what I'm going to do on the bottom here I'm just going to take a very tiny little chamfer cut like that hello Daisy I've said Daisy come in to see me. Right, okay, I'm liking that, I'm liking that. So that's that. I'm gonna part in a little bit deeper now. Get my tool. Oh, don't touch that. There, get my tool rest in. Coming in like that, I'll do a little bit of sanding on the bottom anyway, but that's all right. I don't know. Yeah, that's all good there. That looks all right. Um, all right, let's get this on. Do a little bit of sanding on it. with that tape but that's all right this has got a slight in curve and this one's a little bit straighter I'm happy with that because I want to keep that weight in that bottom because obviously if this puts flowers in the top so right um, now oh, I've got to change my pad on that I've done that with a bit of hand paper I'm now gonna do it We're going up to a 240. I'm going to do a 240 and then a 320 grip. 
and I'll go over to this because this won't this then I won't get any um, sanding lines coming around it okay Very nice. Well, I'll do a free twenty. Yeah, say so always um always sand for a finish, but what you don't want to be doing is sanding away torn grain or tool marks. That's not good. Someone did comment on um, on the last video where I did the um, tea light holder for this, and they said about they didn't see me drill the hole. Well, no, because you've all seen me drill a hole, guy. You all know how to drill. A, you should know how to drill a hole in a piece of wood before you do wood turning. So. I don't consider that I need to show you things like me drilling holes and stuff like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some of my shellac on here for the finish. I'm going to take my face shield off for a minute because I have had a few spits on my face shield, but I'm trying to protect it as much as I can. Okay, so I'm going to put, put some of my shellac on here. Okay, and like I said before, I've got the video up about how I made up my shellac and everything like that and how I made it, what I, why I've made it the way I made it and what I want it to do. also all about if you're using a bit of rag not to oh not to tether yourself to it there we go that's it going as deep as my finger can go really sorry I'm putting my I'm gonna just put you around this side like this okay because I need to be able to look look at it while I'm doing it. Right, okay. Put me hand dead so shield me face. I don't want to shellac me face. At the same time, I don't want to get it all over me face shield. And yes, before people say you will, if you turn the lathe speed down, no. I'm done my shellac so I can use it at this speed. I ain't got time to be turning my lathe up and down all the time. Got no time for that. I so say over my my years of turning, I've come to my happy speed, and this is my happy speed to work at. I don't I don't say you need to turn at these speeds, but it's what I like. Right, got to just lightly let this puff now. Not press too hard, don't want no dragging. That's going to be enough for now. Right, okay. I'm going to have to put a little bit 
on the bottom once I sand it off on the bottom it's probably going to need a little bit of a, a sanding I'm going to part it off now just there put my face shield on because I'm turning again Okay, I'm going to just go in and part this off. Right, there we are. There we are, nice and slow. Right, let her have a little bit of sanding. I came out slightly of the pine tool so it leaves a little bump so then when I sand it that will sand down. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for a second. Take that off of there. And then I'll get it sanded nice and relaxed. There we go. Now, I don't think this will fit on here. I don't think it does, no it doesn't, so that's okay, I will, actually what I will do is I'll do it with my sanding pad here, because this will go in, just to save time, I would have um, changed it around a bit and probably used the other thing, but I'll take that off, put a different pad on it, and we'll all be good, let me get another pad, Right, put another pad on there. That's it. Give it that bottom bit. Um, then bring it just over there a little bit. I'll take you out a little bit like so. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sand this bottom off on here. into the middle bit like so yeah that sits nice right I'm going to put a little bit of shellac on the bottom of it very quickly take the dust mask off take that off what I should have done was kept see Lisa took the um, the tea light holders indoors I should have had them out here and then I could put all three together couldn't I but doesn't matter you've seen them there we go nice little finish on the bottom it's shellac around the bottom like that it's got a little bit dusty but never mind and that's the sweet chestnut so right i will bring you back in a second guys so you can have a proper look all right so there we go guys there's my little set i went and got them so i could show you um sweet chest we've got uh white oak here sweet chestnut for the vase and some larch i think it was yeah i think it was larch for the other one so there you go okay um i'm not the best with flowers i just nicked some of lisa's little artificial ones out of the side and popped them in there i ain't got nothing Christmas here at the moment but there we go guys i think that would make a lovely little set you can make them out of different woods make them out of matching woods but in all honesty i think that would make a lovely little set for someone to put on their mantelpiece at christmas make them up cheap make them out of scrap bits of wood Make them nice and cheap, sell them nice and cheap, and you'll sell loads of them and make loads of money. There you go. So, from me, guys, it is a toodle pip.